Hello, thank you for tuning into my channel. We're going to sash our dress and plates today. So if you want to see how to join blocks into a row like this, please stay tuned. I've made two rows of this dress and plate quilt so far. This is the first row. And you can see that uh, the, the blocks are joined by these black strips. And then here's the second row. Before I did that, I, um, I did lay out all of the pieces and I took a picture with it on my phone so that I was sure that I liked the layout first. Um, these are, the rows are pin marked. So that first block, it has one pin on the top left. This is the second row and it has two pins on the top left. The process to do these is very simple, um, but it just takes some time. So I want to go through the steps with you. This is the current block I'm working on. This is actually the first block that's in the third row. And if I flip it over, every time I made these blocks since the um, I joined those triangles, these were um, so huge and they left um, a little extra triangle. So my first step for uh, preparing the, the block is to cut off these triangles. So I'm going to cut all four of these out and then I'm going to uh, press the block and I want to show you how I square it up. I've cut off my little triangles from this block and I'm using these to make some little half square triangles that I can use as leader enders and that I can add to my crumb quilt. These are the ones, these are three of the ones that I've cut off of this particular block. And now I need to um, square up the block. I have already pressed it. Um, I picked up this ruler. I needed something that was big um, so that I could square up a block this size. These blocks are measuring 28 and a quarter to 28 and a half, but I was concerned about as I go to put them together that they're not exact, and so I need to make them all the same um, dimensions. So I got uh, this mat from Joann's. It's 36 by 24, and I had a 60% off coupon, and that is why I got it. I got the discount on it. And what I'm going to do is fold my block in half, and then I'm going to cut off just a little bit. I'm only cutting probably not even a quarter inch off of each side of these or just barely over a quarter inch. And I'm lining up my um, the bottom of the mat, I mean the bottom of the block with one line on the ruler. And I'm just gonna give it a cut. And so I did that one at the three inch line and so my next one is going to be at the 31 and I could either walk around the table I've done I've walked around the table sometimes and then uh, but right now I'll just turn the ruler so I don't have to move my block and again lining up the this line with one um, line on my ruler and then cutting at 31 inches okay and now I'll do the same thing for the other side. I'm going to um, open this out and fold it in half the other way so I can get the other sides. And this should make the block close to 28 inches square. I'm not, you know, if it's not exact, I'm okay with that. It's, it's going to be really close. And all of these um, blocks are going to have the same really close to 28 inches square. And I haven't had any issues putting them together yet, and this is the last row, so it should be good. Okay, so again, lining up the bottom, the fold on one of the lines on the mat. Okay, and I, I just kind of check and make sure that I'm going to have a little bit to cut off on either side. Okay, and same steps. Here. And then turn in the ruler again. Okay. 
and as I've been um, working on these, I actually just am do doing them one at a time. So just like I'm showing it now, this is how I've done it. I've only squared up and sewn one little square at a time and then um, added on that one. Okay, so now that my block is 28 inches square, I'm going to take a strip of my sashing fabric and this is a uh, full width of fabric here and I'm going to cut it so that it is 28 inches as well. So I start by cutting off the selvage and then um, measuring over 28 inches and cutting here. And this fabric, when I washed it, it got it changed a lot. So it went from being what I thought was really sturdy to much more stretchy and a whole lot softer. So I'm interested to see how it works out in the quilt. I think it's going to be fine. And I'm going to cut, make this other cut at 28 inches. And I'm just going to this way. All right. And from this point, I can get ready to start pinning and sewing. It does not matter what side I start on. Um, but since this is the first block, then one side is going to be... Okay. And look, I've cut this one too long, so I need to remeasure and see what I did. Oh, I believe I cut it at 33 instead of 32. Whoopsies. So I'll fix that right now, and then I'm going to pin it on. And typically when I pin, and I'll show this in a second, I pin the top and the bottom, the middle, and then I keep pinning centers after that. So let's look at that. So I lay it down, and it's going to be um, a rough estimate but I'm trying to get it as close as I can it's going to move a little bit but I'm going to try to pin the heck out of it so it doesn't move as much so I'm going to start at the top and then I pin the bottom I estimate the, the center here and then I'm going to put uh, several pins, but I never, like I won't go straight down. So the next ones will be the center between these pins and the center between these pins. And then I just repeat that. So center, 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 and then I'll do another round as well. So I'll show you that um, and then I'm going to stitch it down. I've added the uh, sashing strip to the purple block here. You can see it on this side. And then I've also done um, for the, this is for the fourth row, and I've actually done the right end block. This is going to be on the left side, and the blue is going to be on the right side. But I wanted you to see how much I'm pinning. I'm putting a lot of pins here. Um, so I'm going to stitch this and prepare the other block and then we'll see how it goes together. I have the center block prepped and ready to be stitched to another block. What I'm going to do is take the purple and I'm going to put it uh, right sides together with the green and we have I'm going to put the sashing on one side. So this is going to join it. And then I'm going to follow those same steps. I'm going to pin it and then stitch it and press. I'll do the same thing when I add the blue. It'll just be on the other side of the green. And then I'll show you what our row looks like. I have the row finished here that I've sashed. You can see the black sashing here. And I have pressed each time I pressed. I pressed it towards the center seam 
Um, so this row is all ready to go. Again, this is the fourth row. So I'm gonna take um, just a second and lay them out so that you can see all four rows. So I have the quill all laid out on the floor. The rows are all put together with the sashing. The only thing I have left now is to join these rows to make it one continuous quilt. I'm really excited and you can tell like how huge it's gonna be. It's longer than my sofa. So I'm really interested to see exactly how large it is and measure it when it gets all done. I was thinking about putting a border on the outside but now I'm not because it's just huge. Um, if you have any questions about this quilt please leave them below. There are other videos about it. Thumbs up the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget uh, the purple quilt on f Facebook and my blog eQuilts blog at WordPress. Um, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!